Now let's talk about adding some motion to your prototype. And I'm talking about motion like a motor, something like this Arduino robot right here. This has some nice geared motors on that. We'll talk about that in a second. Or this really tiny pager motor I have right here that I put a piece of tape on. I also happen to wire some leads to the motor to make it easier for prototyping. My Arduino is powered up and I can show you if I just plug this into ground and 3.3 volts, it spins. And if I flip that around, 3.3 and ground, it spins the other way. Here's the problem. If you want a robot to go forward and then backward or forward and turn, I need to be able to control the motor and which direction it's going in. And you really can't do that with an Arduino. There's a couple of problems. Number one, you can get some surges of power to the motor. You might have a motor, unlike this pager motor, much larger DC motor that requires more power. So you're not able to power that from an Arduino anyway. So what are you to do? Well, today we're going to look at this, which is an H bridge. In fact, this is a quadruple half H bridge. And what that means is an H bridge allows you to control a motor going forward or backwards by only connecting a few Arduino pins to this H bridge. It's a quadruple one because it allows me to connect two motors. Each one can either go forward or, or reverse. So you can see this is perfect for something like this Arduino robot. Now, speaking of motors, here's the other problem. DC motors, they have almost no torque. They typically spin very fast. Geared motors are much more impressive and much more functional in many prototypes because they have a lot more torque. And a geared motor really is kind of the dumbed down version of a servo. A servo is just a geared motor, but it has a potentiometer attached to it, so it knows its position. So a geared motor really is just a dumb servo or similar to like a continuous rotation servo. I'm hoping I can sneak this one out. Here we go. Don't tell the Arduino folks I'm ripping apart their robot. And here it is. You can see it's a very simple DC motor, a little bit larger than my pager one here, but it only has two leads, positive and a negative. There's a small gearbox here and then a wheel. You can even hear it. You can hear all those gears moving. And this has a lot of torque. And you can pick up these geared motors for 10 bucks anywhere on the internet. And you can control them with an H bridge like I'm gonna show you today. So as much as a DC motor is pretty cool, a geared motor is even cooler. But for now, let's just play around with this motor. Now to hook this up, I bought this quad H bridge. And I'm only gonna be using half of it because I'm gonna only connect this one motor to it. So we'll put it into the breadboard right here. And then next thing we need to do is figure out what all these pins do. So we'll do that by looking at the data sheet. And if I go on the mouser package this came in, I can look at, let's see, let's look at the L293NE. If I go over to mouser, I could actually probably just do a search for data sheet l 293 any. There it is. And here's all the information I need to know about it. Let me make it a little larger so it's easier to see. And there we go. That's what I need. This is the 16 pin dip. And if we look at the pins on here, and maybe I'll use this as a pointer, you can see that the integrated circuit has a little divot on the top, that little half circle. And that is to orient the integrated circuit as this is the top. And if this is the top, the upper left-hand corner is pin one. It goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then around the bottom, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we need to start with pin one. And I am going to just randomly pick where we're gonna wire this up. Let's do pin one, which if we look at the data sheet, is the enable pin. And basically, if that pin goes high, it provides power to the motor. Simple as that. So let's put that onto, uh, I don't know, let's do pin eight. 
And maybe I'll write that down as we go along. So enable is pin eight. Now on the data sheet, you see there's pin two is the one A. Pin three is the one Y. Four and five say they need to go to ground. So that's pretty easy. Two Y, two A and VCC. So that's six, seven, and eight. So this is easy, that goes to five volts. And one A and two A are the logic pins for the motor. So if I connect one A high, the motor will spin one direction. But when I do that, I also have to connect two A to low. And if I flip them around, make one low and the other high, it'll turn the other direction. And that's all that is. So I can put one A into, let's see, pin two. Let's put that into pin two. So I have one A into pin two. And let's do two A into pin three. It's not making sense. Hopefully it will make sense in a minute. Put that into pin three. So now two and three. If I make two high and three low, it spins one way, vice versa. Two low, three high, it'll spin the other way. That's it. So what are one Y and two Y? Well, if I look at the data sheet and I keep reading down here, but I've already taken a sneak peek. Those are the wires for the motor. So since I have this little pager motor already hooked up with some leads on it, I can just pick one of them going to pin three and one of them going to pin six. That's it, my motor's hooked up. Now we have to get power over here to this H bridge. So let's connect that up. Number one, we're going to need power from pin eight. So I'll run that over to the positive five volt there. And we're gonna need power from pin 16. Run that over to five volt. And then let's do some grounds. We know that pin, and this is getting a little messy here, pin four and pin five, pin four and five need to go to ground. And even though we're not using the other side, we're gonna go ahead and connect them up as well. Pin 13 and 12. So if we have nine, 10, 11, that's pin 12 and that's pin 13. And both of those need to go to ground. It's a bit of a mess, but it's kind of cool because now I'm going to be able to control this motor forward or backwards with just a couple of pins and my Arduino doesn't even worry about it. Another interesting thing that you can do is you can have a separate power supply for the motor. So if your motor requires 12 volts and you wanna run your Arduino off of a nine volt battery, that's totally fine. And that's taken care of with pin eight right here, but I'm just connecting it to the Arduino to make it easy. So now let's take a look at the code and see if we can get this motor to start spinning. I'll close this out and I'll open up the Arduino IDE. And we'll start with a new blank document and write some quick code. So in the beginning, let's do integer, uh, let's call it motor 1a equal, and we did that to pin two. And we can just copy that really quickly, paste it and paste it again. And we'll call this 2a went to pin three, and we'll call this EN, I don't want to call it enable because that's actually something that Arduino uses in their code. So that's enable. And that is pin eight, I believe we used. Let's double check that. Yes, that's pin eight. Now that we have that all set, let's go into our setup and we will do pin mode motor 1A output 
We're just saying that that's an output pin. And we'll copy that twice and we'll change this to 2A and we'll change this to E, E, N. And while we're here, why don't we digital write E, N, high. And what that's doing right now is telling the H bridge, go ahead and turn the motor on. Send power to the motor, it's okay. And we're doing that in the setup. Sometimes I like to verify code. Let's see, we'll call this motor test and save it. And it compiled okay, good. So that's our setup. Now in our loop, let's go ahead and grab this digital write. Sometimes I just like to do that. And we'll call it motor 1A high. And if we have motor 1A high, we have to do 2A low. Remember if 1A goes high, 2A goes low and it spins one way and vice versa. If it goes low and then 2A is high, then it spins the opposite way. It's as simple as that. Then we can copy this again and we'll do low here and high here. And in between, we'll put a little delay in. And after this, we'll put another delay in. That's it. We'll do auto format, verify it. It's looking good. Let's plug our Arduino in. Let's see what happens. A couple of lines of code. I mean, that took me just a few minutes and I'm controlling a motor. Think about it if it was a robot or anything else. We could be up and running so quickly. Everything looks good there. Let's upload the board, the code to the board, and it's spinning. Oh, and it stopped. Did you see that? And there you go. How easy is that? Think about how you could use a robot and make it go for a certain period of time in one direction. Or what if the sensors could reverse a motor based on whether something was close or not? It's a little hard to see this spinning right now, but if I stop it right here, you can see going that way, and now it's going that way. So that is counterclockwise and now clockwise and counterclockwise back and forth every two seconds and that's how easy it is to integrate a motor into your next project